Hello everyone, uh, I have another a very beautiful chess game to show you, this time by Wilhelm Steinitz, the first official world chess champion. His opponent was Henry Strauss, chess master from Vienna, and this game was played in Vienna in 1862, so a chess game from the Romantic era of chess, and we have the typical opening of the Romantic era of chess, the Evans Gambit accepted and then c3 and Steinitz played d4 so e takes on d4 and Steinitz castled d takes on c3 now black is three pawns up but white has queen to b3 and white has the activity of his pieces attacking on f7 so these moves are some of the most popular moves uh, from the romantic era of chess uh, especially in the Evans Gambit accepted variation so queen to f6 and then e5 by Wilhelm Steinitz developing to queen and defending on f7 but after e5 of course if knight takes then rook to e1 is going to have is going to be problematic for black so queen to g6 and then Steinitz simply captured on c3 with developing his knight so you can see that white is quite active even though white is two pawns down so knight from g to e7 and knight goes back and Steinitz wants to move his knight in to cause some trouble. Black castle, black has managed to castle but knight is getting in and making some trouble. Queen to e4, there are not so many safe spots for the queen. Bishop to d3, all of the pieces of Steinitz function. So queen to b4 and black is begging and hoping to exchange the queens. But now white has... Greek gift, bishop takes on h7, a lightning strike. Sometimes at chess the most obvious move is the best move and sometimes the most obvious move is not the best move at chess. Just like in this case, black should not capture the bishop, but Mr. Strauss decided to capture the bishop. King to h8 should have been considered and then bishop to c2 and the position is for about equal and actually black is a pawn up but after capturing the bishop this is like walking into the lion's den because after king takes on h7 then we have check and then what else king goes back and queen to h3 and now Steinitz is threatening checkmate he is a pawn and a piece down but he has the attack how to deal with this we have rook to d8 making room for the king so queen to h7 was going to be checkmate but now white has a very strong move actually white is winning by force so if checking the king king over and then if checking again black can block with the knight but Steinitz played bishop to a3 controlling the dark diagonal and black can't move the queen actually black played d6 if queen takes knight, the knight is free, but the king is getting checkmated. Now we have check, and then checkmate, the knight is pinned. So bishop to a3 was a pretty strong move by Wilhelm Steinitz. So d6, and simply checking the king, and then capturing the queen. Basically, white is a queen up. Bishop takes on b4. Okay, black has two pieces for the queen, but queen is a queen, of course. Most chess players would resign in this position, so e takes on d6, bishop takes, check, only defense, and then cutting the escape square, sacrificing the knight, but threatening ch to checkmate the king. We have bishop to f5, defending. If bishop takes on f4, then knight to h7 is going to be checkmate, <laughs> because the rook cuts the escape square. So rook from f to e1, bishop to f5, and then knight to h5, this time threatening checkmate on g7. We have bishop to e5, both bishops are defending. So if a6, checkmate, very simple. So both bishops is defending the mate threat, but Steiner says enough. Rook takes on e5 and black resigned. Because of this continuation, eliminating the defender, but then check. And this is too much, too much material for white. Another old but gold chess game from the romantic era of chess. 
Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye-bye.